when the eight, 10 or 12 people who lived in the bell tent were squeezed into it to find shelter against the heat of the sun, the dust or the rain, there was no room to stir and the air in the tent was beyond description, even though the flaps were rolled up properly and fastened. Soap was an article that was not dispensed. The water supply was inadequate. No bedstead or mattress was procurable. Fuel was scarce and had to be collected from the green bushes on the slopes of the Kobe by the people themselves. The rations were extremely meagre and when, as I frequently experienced, the actual quantity dispensed fell short of the amount prescribed, it simply meant famine. Emily Hophouse, report on Blumfontein concentration camp, January 1901. By 1899, tensions between Britain and two African republics, the South African Republic and the Orange Free State, had boiled over into war. Its cause? The discovery of diamonds and gold in both republics. Tensions had been running high since 1895, when the Cape Prime Minister Cecil Rhodes had attempted and failed at a coup d'etat. Tensions built further with British prospectors coming into Johannesburg in search of gold and diamonds, eventually leading to war by October 1899. The South Africans had initial victories, but eventually the British invaded and conquered both republics. Large numbers of Boers refused to accept defeat and started a guerrilla war. The British struggled to defeat the Boers and in 1900 switched to a scorched earth policy, which included concentration camps. The camps alone led to the death of an estimated 50,000, most of whom would be under the age of 16. So now you've had a brief overview into the war, this is what Jacob Rees-Mogg had to say. South African concentration camps had exactly the same mortality rate as existed in Glasgow at the time. This is February 2019, and within seconds of Jacob talking about the concentration camps, he is incorrect. According to national records, Glasgow had 16,000 deaths in 1901. Boer camp death rates were 24,000 per 100,000. Glasgow's was 2,000 per 100,000. What is also disturbing is that he gives equivalency to people being able to freely roam around a city like Glasgow to people being imprisoned for no crime other than being Boer. What we then have to ask is, is he A, deliberately lying to protect British history, B, ignorant of what happened, C, having a meltdown about the truth, D, lacking intelligence, or E, all of the above? So they're not um, a good thing, but where else were people going to live Did when there was no Did you just justify the use of concentration camps? No, I didn't. I'm talking about <laughs> the, Boer, the Boer War had people put in camps for their protection. Where the Another lie, that's not why people were put into the concentration camps. The British were losing the guerrilla war, and this simple policy was, let's just do scorched earth, take everything off the land, including people and food, make sure the guerrillas cannot continue their fight because they aren't being supplied and protected by local inhabitants. And we do that by imprisoning the local inhabitants, women and children, inside concentration camps. The British when, invented the use of concentration but, camps. But, but I'm afraid you're confusing concentration camps with Hitler's extermination camp. Really patronising comment there, and it's essentially a translation, you don't know what you're talking about, and you could translate it further by saying, essentially, he's calling her stupid. The only person to bring up the term extermination camps is Rhys Mogg himself. So why is he bringing that up? They're two different things. Concentration camp, you concentrate a part of the population into the area, the outcome can vary. Extermination camp is you concentrate the population there with the aim of exterminating them. But the Boer camps, there is evidence to show that it was a deliberate effort to exterminate parts of the population, and we'll talk about that in a minute. I'm not saying they're the same these, thing. I'm these, saying that any concentration these, camp these is were, de facto were, an awful, awful these, thing. These were people who were interned for their safety. What a massive lie. They were not in turn for their safety. They were interned because there was a guerrilla warfare going on. The British were losing and they had to resort to more extreme methods in order to deal with the guerrilla warfare. On the 16th of June 1900, Lord Roberts, Chief Commander of the British Forces, issued a proclamation stating that for every attack on a railway line, the closest homestead would be burned down. This was the start of scorched earth policy. When this didn't work, Roberts issued another proclamation in September 1900 stating that all homesteads would be burnt in a radius of 16 kilometers of any attack and that all livestock would be killed or taken away and all crops destroyed. This is a systematic policy to drive out the guerrillas but also to damage and hurt any local inhabitants 
guilty or innocent. Now, that is not a good thing. I'm not Hundreds in favour. Hundreds of thousands of people died. The death rate was exactly the same as in Glasgow. Again, another lie. Death rates 100 years ago were considerably higher than they are now uh, for all sorts it of reasons. It was systematic including, murder. It was not systematic murder. That's simply wrong. So let's break this down. Definition of systematic. Done or acting according to a fixed plan or system. Was there a system to putting all those people into concentration camps? Yes. What we then have to ask is, was there a system or method in place for killing those people whilst in the camps? And that's debatable. That we could debate. But what we can also definitely say is, 25,000 children under the age of 16 died. Have a listen to this quote by Emily Hobhouse, who describes the conditions that one person had to live through inside the camp as a result of them being associated with a Boer gorilla. She was a frail, weak little child in desperate need of good care. Yet, because her mother was one of the undesirables due to the fact that her father neither surrendered nor betrayed his people, Lizzie was placed on the lowest rations and so perished with hunger that after a month in the camp, she was transferred to the new small hospital. Here she was treated harshly. The English disposed doctor and his nurses did not understand her language and, as she could not speak English, labelled her an idiot, although she was mentally fit and normal. Emily Hobhouse tells the story of the young Lizzie Van Zyl, who died in Blomfontein concentration camp. That is only one person's account of one person's experience within the concentration camps. But when you take into account the abhorrent numbers that died within the camps, it begins to start to put a direction towards whether or not this was systematic. And for my money, I would suggest that this is a systematic destruction of a group of people. I'm not advocating people being taken off their farms and put into camps. But he just did by saying that people needed to go into the camps to be fed. But the reason they needed to be fed was because the British had systematically destroyed all their crops. But there was a war going That's on and people, and people were being taken there so they could be fed because the farmers were away fighting the Boer War. A war that had been started by the British for gold and diamonds. So th this is one of the things where you've got to understand the history of what was going on, not just look at it from the comfort of 2019. What you're seeing in front of you now is Lloyd George, Prime Minister of Britain during World War I. He was also a politician during this period, and guess what he suggested was taking place in South Africa? He claimed in the House of Commons that the Conservative government of the day had a policy of extermination directed against the Boer population. Uh, and say that uh, this is the same as what was going on with Hitler. It is comp Hitler had concentration camps. Britain had concentration camps. One might even argue that the idea of the concentration camps that Hitler set up were based on the ideas of what the Spanish had done in Cuba and what the British had done in South Africa. When you see images like this, it does tend to conjure up other images that were similar in World War II and the Nazi concentration camps. Completely and utterly different, simply wrong to like the I've no idea why the audience are clapping. I assume because they think that Jacob Rees-Mogg is correct and that he's proven the point that there weren't concentration camps or they weren't vicious or they weren't evil in some way. And yet everything I've shown you shows that Jacob Rees-Mogg is actually out of his depth. And it seems that the audience are more than anything else clapping because he's vindicated British history as a source of good. Yet this part is nothing but evil. So, what do you think? A, B, C, D or E? Please put your choice in the description. Love to hear your comments and thoughts on the video as usual. Once again, thanks for listening and bye for now.